Hi folks, this is Jason. Hope you're okay today. I'm going to give a lecture on advocacy and anti in discrimination and how one can apply advocacy and anti discrimination principles in the practice of your daily work, whatever work that would be. I'm going to demonstrate the handling of a situation in my own uh, particular work. Um, and how I used advocacy and implemented anti-discrimination uh, practice. The problem, over a period of six months, over 20 young people from the estate began to come to our church service, the 6 p.m. service. Only eight people attended, all of them elderly. They found the young people intimidating young people these young people were well behaved and most of the time but the adults and leaders of the church really did not want the young people the situation came to a head when one leader almost lost his temper which made the young people even more rowdy than they could be I was running the evening service and common sense said don't let the young people into the service or provide alternative weekday service but these young people were happy to sit in the service. Is it right? The solution. In the end I felt that the congregation had rights and also the young people. So I organized a service for the young people after the 6, 6 p.m. service at 7.30 p.m. This caused problems I was run as I was running a youth work and I was resources to do it. Reflection. My knowledge of anti-discrimination made me realize that people can feel oppressed. I realized the old and young would experience oppression in different ways. The young need a place to hang out, the old need a place to worship. Second, my skills in anti-discrimination made me take proactive measures. I often try to help the young and old appreciate each other's needs often by telling stories of individuals. I also got young, the young to, uh, to do practical jobs in the church. Third, equal opportunities is something we worked on in our class with, the, with them. I felt that the young had little value in the community and I tried to open the young to see they are valued and had a future was evident in this situation. You could see how the old people wanted more of a strict way of dealing with young and this had come from their upbringing. The young were flippant to the old and this came from the broken social heritage of the estate. I'd like now to talk about some key aspects of advocacy. What is advocacy? Why should we practice advocacy? and how does advocacy work? Number one, what is advocacy? Advocacy is a, mean to a means to empower those who have no power. It is a practical way of helping individuals and groups who are on the edge of society. Advocacy seeks to listen, respect and defend the rights of helpless people. There are different types of advocacy. Advocacy generally speaking means the process quote of pleading a court advocacy means helping the disadvantaged. Self-advocacy means helping people to help themselves. This is really people being their own advocates. Collective advocacy is when a group of people come together to, to, campaign, to campaign on issues affecting more than one individual. In essence, an advocate is a citizen who is independent of human services, who creates a relationship with a person, who is a social inclusion, so, who is socially excluded in some way, either through class, gender or any other issue. An advocate will then press for the rights of such a person. Advocacy has many, many positive elements. It is a way of creating social inclusion. It is also gives hopes to the underdog and it gives people of prejudice aware of being challenged in a creative dimension. Also it brings healing to those by social exclusion. The details of ad advocacy need to be remembered. 
It is a partnership between two people. One of the partnership is disabled, the other person is not. If a person is going to be an advocate, one has to remember you have to be loyal to the clients. Advocates have to be open to a creative process in conflict resolution, meaning you have to work with other groups who can help you. Advocates should set their own goals and not let the professional services dictate to you. This is important because advocates can easily be involved in a conflict of interest. Integrity can be maintained if clients are put first. Second, why should we do advocacy? I think the first reason is that advocacy has its roots in Christian history and theology. Williams has said, uh, Williams Profiles in Liberation, 23rd publication, 1988. Williams has said that Christ Christology done from below using the humanity of Christ has often yielded practical results in social action. Secondly, I think that there is a, a lot of fear in society through prejudice. Advocacy can help to get rid of that fear. That's Baiko, The Challenge of Black Theology in South Africa, John Knox Press, 1989. Thirdly, I think that every human being has rights. People are valuable in the eyes of God and people have the right to health and community and education. Nicholson, A Black Future, Trinity Press, 1990. People are valuable in the eyes of God. People have the rights to health, community and education. Fourthly, we need to advocacy. If the church is not going to make a mistake, what is the point of offering salvation when people do not see salvation socially? An example of this can be seen in the history of South Africa. The South African people experienced oppression from the government, but the Dutch Reformed Church in that country never helped the black people. Nolan, God in Africa, 1988. There are more reasons why we need advocacy. The fifth reason being Christians need to speak a universal message. People need to be told there is truth and hope. This is fantastic news for individuals and groups who are marginalized. Niebuhr, The Churches of the Disinherited, 1996. Sixthly, Christians should be people who try to build better communities for people. Uh, what better way than to fight for people's rights? Morberg of the Church of the Social Institution, 1984. Sixthly, people, people need freedom to be truly human. Advocacy can help people be fully human by helping people find freedom. Without freedom, we make people feel oppressed. Without freedom, we stifle people's creativity. Without freedom, we bring only despair. People lose their dignity. They lose all hope. Without freedom, we create isolation and oppression. We feed prejudice. Freedom is a sacred trust to humanity and we cannot let it be taken from any person or society. Freedom must be defended and kept at all costs. Hill, A Sociology of Religion, 1977. Seventhly, I think society is always changing. Advocacy can be an excellent way of bringing change in a creative way. Advocates can be people who bring new ideas and solutions to Firstly, Advocacy is needed as it can bring encouragement for oppressed communities. Studies have shown how communities need this practical pastoral like care. In quotes from Henderson Skills in the Neighborhood Work 2001. One of the neighborhood works task is to be, quote, one of the neighborhood works task is to be supportive both of the groups and of its individual members. The group particularly needs the support and encouragement of the worker at times when its energies and enthusiasm are low and it feels it has suffered setbacks or achieved little in meeting its goals. End of quote. But are there any arguments or ideas why advocacy should not be used? I think that advocacy lacks 